it'll always be my first love because it was my first team I ever played for. And of course it all went to the crazy book and movie. So it's, it's, I love the place, you know, I think it was, it was kind of twofold because I think a lot of fans still didn't understand the game. Like they didn't get, you know, what was offsides, you know, but they certainly knew it was a physical game. Uh, you know, a guy like Doug Smith shows up and he's fighting everybody from the other team. So, of course, I was like an overnight sensation. So for me, it was easy, you know, and I loved it. But uh, yeah, the fans right from the beginning always love their hockey there. I started really late. And I think that's part of the, you know, the success of the book and the movie was kind of, you know, it's such an underdog story. You know, I, I realize it now today, years later, but, you know, back Back when I was 19, 20, I had never played organized hockey and I just picked it up just for fun. But my, my, my key was that I was an amateur boxer and I had done a lot of fighting and boxing as a kid growing up. And, and back in the eighties, obviously, as you know, you know, fighting was huge in hockey, especially in the minor leagues. I worked with some real known hockey skate gurus, so to speak. Um, and I literally at 20 years old, was doing power skating classes with eight and nine year old kids. But as the days and weeks went along, cause I kept going, it was like say two days a week. I would go every Tuesday and Thursday night at say 6 PM for an hour. And I was skating with all these little kids. And once we got to all understand that I'm trying to be like you and learn to play hockey, even at that age, they were wise guys. They were giving me a hard time. If I fell down, they'd give me a hard time. And, and obviously I have a, I have a personality. I have the gift of gab. So I would always be rah rah and with the kids and giving them a hard time and, and they'd give it right back to me. So if you can believe it, to have a socialization for, you know, uh, an age group of 10 or below at 20 years old, it was kind of comical, but it worked. Certainly, like you said, I, I got to play in an amateur hockey league in my area and uh, in the league really consisted of a lot of pro hockey players who were legit NHL players. And, and there were a lot of tough guys in that league. And, um, and that was my angle. It was to see if I can compete with these guys, not on a hockey ability, skating, shooting, scoring level, but as a fighter. And if I went out and kind of challenged these guys and, you know, if I could hold my own, I thought maybe if I can do good against these guys, maybe I'm worthy of a job down in the minors. And, and that's kind of how the ball got rolling because I did get noticed by a scout from the NHL. And uh, by the end of the summer league, he said, you know, I, I can make a few phone calls for you. Um, you know, you're going to have to work on your game. There's no two ways about it. But your willingness to fight and your actual ability to fight, uh, your head and shoulders above a lot of guys that are trying to do the secondary. I remember my very first game. It was a home game in the Coliseum. And it was against the Knoxville Cherokees. And in the first period, I fought a kid named Greg Batters. I believe he was a L.A. Kings draft pick who was a tough guy and could play. He came out of juniors and uh, and I did very well against him. And then in the second period, I went out against their other heavyweight fighter. His name was Alex Davio. And I actually hit him with a shot and broke his nose and he was out of the rest of the game. So my introduction to Winston-Salem Thunderbirds hockey in my very first game uh, I can tell you they were going to throw a parade down Main Street for me because the fans were going berserk. They loved it. Here's this guy from Boston. Everyone was calling me Yankee Doodle. And <laughs> it was great. It was it was just, it was funny. So it worked. I mean, we played Johnstown, the Johnstown Chiefs in the finals. And uh, it was a really physical series. Um, and we could play a physical game. Like we had guys that could play physical. Uh, there wasn't a lot of fighting. It was just, like I said, chippy and physical. And, uh, and I just remember the seventh game went back to Johnstown because uh, they had the better overall record. So the seventh game was in their uh, crummy old shack of the, I think it's called the War Memorial or something, Memorial. where I actually played there the following year for a few games for Johnstown. But um, yeah, we went to Johnstown on the road and we won the championship on the road. It was incredible. Yeah. I, I didn't think my stories were, were, you know, justified to be a book. But uh, one of my really good friends, Adam Fatazio, who was the co-author of the book, he was the guy who said, you know, you're always telling me these stories night after night, game after game, bus rides, the lifestyle of being a minor league hockey guy. And you should really write a book about this because there's nothing out there like it. It was probably about 10 years later. And um, it was almost by accident because the story I got was 
a guy from a Hollywood writing team who writes scripts for movies saw the cover of my book in the airport. And he said, as soon as I saw the cover, and for those people that never have seen it, it's a picture of my face, the big black guy with a title goon. And he says, I knew it was about hockey and I, I wanted to read it and look at it. And he said, once he read it, he started making phone calls to his writing teams in Hollywood saying, we should make a movie about hockey enforcers in general, because they're such a huge part of the game itself. And I just wrote this, I just read this book of some kid that wrote about his experiences in minor league that we can kind of fall back on. You know, I, I had the best time of my life that very first rookie season in minor pro hockey in, in Winston-Salem and, and the Thunderbird family uh, between management and players and the fans. I mean, you know, I, I could never be more thankful. And, uh, and they accepted me as kind of like, you know, an, an outsider coming in to, uh, to their family. And, uh, you know, like I said, I had been down there five or six years ago for when you guys got back into the Federal Hockey League. And, um, you know, it went by too fast for a weekend visit. It was just so much to do.